in upstate New York's vast Montezuma wetland complex. A number of different wetland systems combine to sustain an extraordinary diversity of plant and animal life. This expansive marsh is a rare remnant of an ancient inland freshwater sea, Lake Iroquois, formed from glacial melting on a colossal scale. Lake Iroquois drained away thousands of years ago in a roar of water and sediment so powerful that whirlpool-shaped caverns and plunge holes were drilled into bedrock as the torrent sped eastward. At one time, Lake Iroquois covered most of central and western New York State, including lowlands that now form the eastern rim of Lake Ontario. At that time, the St. Lawrence River, a northern drainage route that serves as the modern-day outflow for the Great Lakes, was blocked by the Laurentide Ice Sheet. Eventually, the ice melted completely, leaving behind a huge mass of mineral and rock debris that today comprises one of the most interesting and unique geological patterns in the world. Native Americans called this region Tayohiro, the River of Rushes. It is easy to see why. Montezuma is dominated by vast colonies of wetland plants that include rushes and reeds sedges, and other vegetation. Montezuma is an immense marsh that includes pools, swamps, streams, and mudflats, each a distinct ecosystem unto itself. This complex lies at the north end of one of New York's largest and deepest lakes. It is a stopover for many species of water birds in migration, a gigantic nursery for others in summer. Herons, shorebirds, ducks, swans, and geese congregate here whenever the water is not frozen. A portion of this enormous wetland is managed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as the Montezuma National Wildlife Refuge. The refuge is part of a much larger wetland system that includes hundreds of lakes, ponds, streams, marshes, swamps, bogs, and wet meadows covering thousands of square miles of upstate New York. New York's Finger Lakes were formed by glacial action that occurred 10,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age. A vast ice sheet receded from North America, depositing silt and stone that formed natural dams against runoff from the higher terrain to the south. A slight ridge in the landmass that separates the Finger Lakes from Lake Ontario underlies a vast marsh that is today the confluence of the Clyde River and Cayuga Lake watershed. This flow was tapped to feed the famous Erie Canal during the 19th century, portions of which were incorporated into the New York State Barge Canal, still in operation today. The Erie Canal was the first road west for many pioneers. Today, the New York State Thruway a major interstate highway linking the Northeast and Midwest follows the same route, intersecting the marsh from east to west. It will be a long time before water entering this marsh reaches the sea. The flow begins to the south in the Finger Lakes Highland, a geological formation carved by glaciers 10,000 years ago and unique in the world. The boulder-strewn floors of two of these lakes, including Cayuga at the southern end of the Montezuma Marsh, sit below sea level in a region where average terrain is several hundred feet above it. Rainwater and snowmelt trapped among tree roots clinging to layers of porous sedimentary rock slowly percolates into springs and creeks. Soon, the flow quickens at the edge of the ridge, then drops in a thundering rush of foam and spray to the valley below. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
at Tarkanic Falls on Cayuga's western flank, regional geology is exposed in dramatic relief. Layer upon layer of sedimentary rock cut away by incessant stream-fed erosion. As the glacier that carved this deep fjord-like valley retreated, it left many streams hanging, creating waterfalls that over time have carved deep glens into the rock. At the base of these waterfalls are round basins that locals call punch bowls. Tarkanic Creek continually retreats as erosion continues to wear away at the valley wall. The falls are now more than a mile and a half upstream from where they were when the last ice sheet departed. Once the flow reaches dense bedrock beneath the softer sandstone overlay, its pace slows and the powerful abrasive forces of tumbling water, sand and mineral action dissipate. While this highland runoff does eventually drain away toward Lake Ontario, during the wettest months it collects here in an extensive marshy environment that includes a variety of wetland subsystems.